and let us all that we can to build a better future. Well, uh, a whole lot happened <laughs> Um, seemingly kind of overnight around here. So there's a couple of things that have happened. First of all, Caleb Mal uh, Malpin from the Center of Political Innovation, who has been a guest on this show and has been a supporter of Hard Lens, even though there are political differences, he has been supportive and we've supported him. He just found out today that his PayPal account has been frozen and suspended. Essentially, uh, they have said that they don't want to do business with him anymore, that they are uncomfortable. They, that he got a letter saying they were uncomfortable doing business with him and that his funds may be subject to a suspension of up to 180 days. Mm, my God, that's, that's going to severely impact his And that whatever he had in that account. Now, if he wasn't clearing his account, many people do clear out those accounts as quickly as possible. But I don't know what his situation is. But essentially what it looks like here is that he is being targeted possibly under various sanction rules. Now, mm -hmm. he is listed on Twitter as being Russian state-affiliated media, even though he that was his own personal account. It was not his account in, in uh, connected to his work on RT. Mm -hmm. And we're beginning to suspect, and we can't be certain, and we, we want to be responsible about this. We cannot be certain, but that's what we suspect is possibly going on here. The point is they're going after individuals at this point. People are finding their livelihoods uh, being threatened, not only in terms of platforming of content, such as what happened to Chris Hedges and Lee Camp, mm -hmm. who all saw their life's work ripped off. Um, you know, YouTube and, and in some cases Spotify. Um, but in this case, they're actually going running interference with people's ability to make a living or to collect funds that they have legitimately earned. I, this is terrifying. I want to add something to this. So YouTube has severely given us a gut check, which is why we're going to be making the changes the next month where the first half hour of the show will be on YouTube, and then the rest of it will be on Rockfin Odyssey, eventually Rumble as well. And um, this is a, a gut check to content creators. And look, what PayPal is doing to Caleb, it's not right. Um, and when I say that the censorship is getting tough, it, it truly is, which is why I say support us on Patreon. Because, But then again, too, how long will that last? Because there's all this uncertainty that's happening yep. in, in this day and age. And YouTube, you know, when Daniel was running Hard Lens, you know, we were we were doing very well, and there was a point. And then uh, come the election, um, everything gets turned off, and not only was Hard Lens Media affected, but a lot of independent media content creators have been affected. And getting back up, especially after six strikes, um, I gotta say it's it's a lot harder than than people realize. And I feel only now we're kind of getting out of the woods, but even then, the woods still seem we're still kind of deep in the woods, still trying to just make sure that we're still around. That's so, Caleb, we stand in solidarity with you. Yeah, you know, and, and, and Caleb and I are probably the first to tell each other, uh, tell anybody that we're not on the same page politically. I may very well be first up against the wall if Caleb's faction takes over the government. No, but, no. no I, I, well, well, but the, the point here is this. There's a principle here, and the fact is is that he has said some things um, that people don't like, and his now his ability to ha maintain control over his own funds, the that what he needs to continue living uh, has been jeopardized. This is these this these are dark days. This is not good and I am deeply concerned. The other thing um, that I'm gonna bring up, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, um, as the many of you woke up this morning to find out that the Department of Homeland Security is essentially uh, putting together a disinformation governance board which is supposed to, I, I guess, uh, monitor so-called disinformation and misinformation as it pertains to national security. Uh, and I have to tell you, this is a little uh, disturbing. Now, I understand that nobody wants misinformation or disinformation that can cause real problems, particularly in times of disaster or, or really any time uh, when people are getting misinformation, they make bad choices, they may not understand their options, it can create and foment distrust. But the idea of handing a an agency that does not have a great track record, uh, the ability to classify what is disinformation and misinformation is not settling well with me. Mm -hmm. It is not settling well, I think, with a lot of people at this point. And the timing on this, of course, after uh, Elon Musk, who I do not care for one bit, 
uh, is is trying to buy out Twitter. This timing is extremely suspicious. And in fact, this morning I was listening to I think it was I was I think it was NPR, and they were talking about how in the EU they are up in arms about uh, so-called disinformation and misinformation and saying, of course, we want a free and frank exchange of ideas, but not ones that we think are wrong. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, always, it's like, hey, you know what? We need a minister of truth to settle this one. Yeah, we need a minister of truth. And, and I am, uh, to say the least, disturbed. So um, I have a question. And if you, those of you who follow me on Twitter, um, which you're welcome to do, I'd love to connect with you there, uh, check out that tweet because I said I'm going to start today with a question. These guys don't even know what the question is, but I like to spring surprises on people. Um, look, I've always handled civically minded, independently, and differently from the rest of the team here. Uh, these guys have been very gracious about it, and you all have been very gracious about it, because I tend to not focus on the sexier topics like um, Julian Assange and, and that sort of thing. Um, but I tend to focus on day-to-day -day things that I think affect people's lives, and they affect everybody's lives, regardless of political persuasion. Well, issues of speech, free speech, and media control, whether it is new or legacy media control of speech, um, affects everybody, whether you want to believe it or not, whether you are cheering or opposing Elon Musk's proposal to take over to Twitter, whether you cheered or um, disapproved of the decision to remove Donald Trump uh, and his accounts, or uh, you know, all of these things. Um, they affect all of us, and they affect all of us deeply. deeply. Now, I'm going to continue to uh, focus on consumer affairs, disaster management, um, this, this, stories about social welfare programs, foreclosures, consumer finance. But would you all like me to devote a heck of a lot more of my time to media matters? to looking at media control, narrative control, um, the, the definitions of misinformation and disinformation and malinformation. If you would like that me to do that, uh, please enter one in the chat, and I'm going to probably do half and half for each show on Media Matters as well as my other stories. If you don't want that put to in the chat, we'll check it out later. And I want to hear from you because I am feeling a stronger, stronger pull to examining the control of information in this country and around the world at this point. And I would like to bring that to you if you think that would be something you would like to hear more of on this show. So I want to hear about it. Okay. So far, it's a lot of ones. So far, it is a lot of ones. And I think, look, we got Here's what I say on the show. Look, the censorship is very, very, very real. And, you know, we have to be careful what we say on YouTube, which is why, again, next month, we're, we're going to be making the changes to the show. Um, because we, there's going to be a come a point to where I'm going to get a phone call from Daniel or FaZe, maybe in the morning or in the evening, be like, hey, Kit, Harlan's media has just been deleted. Did you do anything? And then we're all going to come down to the same conclusion. Uh-oh, the censorship finally, you know, Big Brother finally got rid of us. Now, again, that is the worst case scenario, but let's be very clear here. Look, look what's happened to Convo Couch. Look what's happened to Mikatsu Katsu Network. Look what's happened to a lot of other content creators that have no choice but to go to Odyssey or Rockfin. Because, again, when, when we're in this day and age where we tell the truth or we cover a story that's factual, but yet we get hit for it, because it's a lie, apparently, according to corporate media. But then, or we get hit for it because the algorithm misheard what we said. Yes, exactly. And the thing is, remember, folks, 2020. It wasn't too long ago. It wasn't too long ago, where the Hunter Biden laptop was agreed by everyone in the media, the establishment media, to be clear, that it was a fake, false story. What did we learn this year? New York Times, authoritative source, Hunter Biden laptop is real. All of it is real. You know, and, and the thing is, I am I am concerned. And these are the things that I have to work on and I have to make sure that one, Hardlands Media doesn't get destroyed or deleted. And then number two, I gotta make sure that we're able to keep on surviving because I really can't give any of you a clear direct answer of how long we'll be on YouTube. It's the thing that keeps me up at night. It's the thing that lets me wonder, can I provide and take care of my team? Can I make sure that FaZe will be taken care of and everyone else is a contributor? It's something that scares me. And I'll tell you something else, too. I've been thinking a lot about this. I'm thinking a lot about my time when I was in college, down at State University. 
starting out in 19, I started in 1988 into the early 90s. I was down there. And at, at that time, the first Persian Gulf War happened. And I want to keep in mind that at that time, we had active uh, activists getting CIA and FBI recruiters off the campus. The CIA and the FBI were not our buds. They mm -hmm. were not our friends. The media, the mainstream media, so-called, uh, we respected the work of individual journalists, make no mistake, um, but we had some real suspicions. And I remember when we had the Persian anti-war rallies for the, during the Persian Gulf War. And what I remember was there was a poet, and she read a poet poem, and one of the lines went something along, along, it was calling out to politicians and people who were not acting appropriately. And she said, what about you? What about you, news media? What about you, journalists? What's the matter? Pentagon got your lens? There was nothing wrong with calling out media at that time. You were not an enemy of the people if you called out the media. That wasn't the way I was brought up. It wasn't the way we grew up. It wasn't what was happening when Gen Xers were emerging into adulthood. It's not what happened. We would go to we and we would do we, we did that at every rally. We would call out the media because the Pentagon had its lens, had their lens. We also got yelled at. We got screamed at. And you know what they said to us most of all? Go back to Russia. <laughs> 